Alright guys, Kickats here and this is the scenario number 3 setup. Anyways, now I do want to remind you all that this is essentially a setup for scenario 3. So if you have missed scenario 2, scenario 1, do go back and uh, check it out because scenario 1 and 2 is the build up to scenario number 3 and uh, I wouldn't want you getting the spoil for the end of the surprise. But anyways, setup time. As you can see here, we have two new objects, scenario keys, and they will essentially tell you which keys that you will be focusing on. But anyways, uh, scenario three is mainly the introduction of new cards to your characters and the release of all your tutorial cards. Righto, and then uh, they will teach you about blessings, curses, and new monster modifications. Right, so, okay, I gotta stop saying that. Anyways, uh, let's set up the board first. So as you can see here, I got the Z-Lot out of the uh, board here, and let us simply set this up quickly, quietly, and fastively. Do remember to put your Z-Lot initiative card in here. Uh, and then we'll switch this up. Whoop bam, whoop bam. Uh, okay, and then put your initiative right here. Now do remember that this is only activated when you draw a basic skill card right here, and then it will be activated alongside with all your characters' initiation cards. Alrighty, so after you read this introduction right here, be sure to read the special rules. Uh, characters marked with two I abilities. So what you should be having here is two B cards already completed, done. And then favorite and retrieval will be your two cards. These are two cards that will replace close cut. And uh, this should have been done at uh, scenario number two, just remember that. And then I'll t tell you which two cards are supposed to be added. Now, you will be going to your uh, learn to play guide, page number 19. Right click page number 19 at the very bottom where we left off from scenario number two after the item shop. Oh yeah, I should place some items just in case. Uh, I could I could do it later. Anyways, all characters should now receive their two first level one cards from their character's large box and add them to their pool of availability. So since we are hatchet, read the favorite and the retrieval are your two cards that you should be adding to your deck before the scenario starts. Now you will have eight cards currently. We're ready, let us move on. Do read for the cards for the uh, other characters as well. Um, this time we will be dealing with Zelots and uh, Giant Vipers. All right, so that's essentially set up already. Now we also have new terrains, difficult terrains. These purple spots essentially require two movement points unless you are jumping or you are pulled or pushed across these. Okay. Uh, there will be a jumping icon later in the series, and then we have a new action mechanics called Experience. These experiences come from these cards right here. As you can see here, it says 2 EXP. Yeah. Do remember this is considered a lost card, and this is considered your, um, your round. So whenever you play this card, just remember to put two EXP on your experience tracker points because those will represent your experience points. Okay, there is also jump on this card. You see at the bottom right here, jump. It's essentially a movement that allows you to jump across enemies. So let's say there is a Z lot. Let's do this. There is Z-Lot blocking your way, and you'll use jump. You could just one, two, three, 
and jump over these guys and this thing, the purple terrain, without using two movement speed. Okay. Also, when you're setting up, only scenario, only the first portion because there is door number one, door number two. These are separated into three sections, and unless, until the character goes through door number one, these will not be placed or released into action. That will be taught in scenario two. And also, when scenario, when the door first one is done, read this small text right here. And then once this is done, you can read this portion. And after you're completed with the quest, uh, as in destroying all the enemies, you will read the conclusion and get your EXP. Right. Anyways, these are now your active bonuses. There is two types of bonuses. There is something called persistent bonuses, active until the end of the scenario or until the allotted time use is over. So uh, this will tell you what to do. You may add free plus attack to any of your range attacks by moving the token from this card to the target after attack ability is resolved. So essentially you could just hold on to this card throughout the session until you use it. So when the target dies, place the token on the hex in which it dies. If you loot that hex, return the hat token to this card. So essentially, this is a hatchet. Every time you attack, you could use the hatchet, put it on your weapons card, throw it at the enemy. After you kill it, you could go to the enemy there will be a token card. So this is your token. And if you loot the hex, return that token to this card. And that's essentially what it's going to do. That's a really strong effect. Very nice. Did not know about that since I have yet to play because I'm still waiting for my people, for my friends to start playing. That's a sad thing. Yes, yes indeed. Anyways, shield. Shield will be described, and I believe shield is described in here. Okay, there we go. Here is your shield amount. Shield 1. The shield effects only apply after the attack modifier. So let's say the enemy attacks you, it will be dealing free damage. And then it'll have to draw an attack modifier of either negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, or times 2. And when it does attack, you could then apply it. So let's say I draw a modifier of 1, it'll be 4 damage. Then you could apply your shield, shield effects. So essentially, if the enemy does a critical attack of times 2, then you can't reduce it to 4 damage. Like, 3 damage is going to be 6, but if you reduce it to 2, before instead. No, you can't. It has to be after the combat modifier. Okay. Uh, I already described jump. Okay. Uh, I also described the brown bonuses. Let me find it from the Void Cleric. The Void Cleric. We'll be using the signs of the Void as an example right here. These were your active card display so essentially this card will go right here and then you'll have that because do, do read that yeah yeah read this okay anyways this essentially uh, providing shield or a curse so let's say you perform a curse on an enemy do remember you could shuffle a curse okay wait wait I haven't described it yet uh, so here's the void walker what bam at the start of your next five turns, perform a curse range to action. Every time you do a curse, you will be giving the enemy, the monster, a curse modification. So what this curse modification will do, for example, this is a monster attack modifier. You will grab one curse, flip it over, put it in here, shuffle it, and whenever the monster draws it, it will be a miss. Likewise, for blessings, blessings will always come out as times two. Whenever you do 
pick up these cards, do not shuffle your deck. Just simply pull this out, put this back into the blessing deck or the curse deck. And then you may shuffle your deck. So here's an example. Let's say I managed to draw this card. I'm like, oh, a times two. So there is a difference between this times two and this times two. This times two has yellow markings on the side. This curse has lightning effects on the side. Do remember which one is yours and do remember. And there will be also a bon bomb demolitionist icon right there. Yeah. So after I pull this out, I would throw them back in. I'm going to delete it because I'm too lazy to do so. Hey, great. Um, so essentially, this is five turns. So every five turns, if you manage to use this ability, uh, oh wait, this should be right here. Where's my marker? Okay, should be every three turns. Once it reaches here, you get one EXP. What bam? Once I reach here, you get another EXP. Excuse me, and then right here, that will be lost card. What bam? That will be gone. Alrighty. Next up, we have the new conditions: poison. I already described blessings and curse. So there is a description right here if you want to do a little recap. Anyways, poison damage and wound damage. Wound damage will be located right here. Well, that's poison. Wound damage is your orange thing. Now, whenever your character suffers any of these effects, put them right here. Okay, so the differences between wound and poison effects is that wound is essentially uh, dot damage. Damage over time. So, it is your turn once more after you have already received a wound damage. You will lose one HP per turn that comes to your turn. Yeah? So essentially, it's Demolitionist's turn. He loses one point of HP. Void Warden, he doesn't lose anything until it comes to his turn. Then he loses his health. Okay, so whenever this can be stopped by healing. So essentially, whenever the Void Warden, or if you decide to take a long rest, which we will describe later you will heal and since the wound does not stop the healing it will increase your healing the current hit point value HP hit point value and stop the bleeding and then you can lose this token however however poison is a different object poison will be added to your enemy's attack modifier as plus one and it will continue to do so until it is removed. So if you are healed, it will take this away. However, if you are poisoned and you are damaged when you are healed, it will remove the poison effects, but it will not heal your current hit point effects. Hit point. Current hit point numbers. Good gracious. There we go. Okay, now I'll be describing long rest. So long rest essentially is the difference between um, short rest is that it has, let me get some items to show. Du, 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 where is search? Let me search for these and then this. Let's go. Okay. Du, du. Drag this over here. Flip, flip, flip. Oh, that's two boots. Oh, that's fine. One boot here and right here. These are effects. This is flipped over. And this is turned over since you already used it for some odd reason. Okay. So when you whenever you are taking a long rest, and let's say you have six of these cards in the lost lost pile. And like two of these cards in the discard pile for some odd reason. Um when you take a long rest, you are able to retrieve all of your cards. And then you will have to choose which card to
to remove. So I'm, I'm going to be choosing like, mm, I don't really like this card as much. I'll put this in the Lost deck. You have the ability to choose now. And then you also perform a self heal on your character. So let's say this character is 4 HP. I add 2 more HP. That will be an end of your turn after you take a long rest. So essentially the long rest re reactivates all your ability cards and gives you 2 HP or heals off the condition cards. So if you're bleeding, if you're poisoned, remember what effects. Bleeding, you could heal those 2 HP back and then remove the bleeding effects. If you're poisoned, you cannot heal back 2 points, but you could remove the poison effect. Yes. All right, multi-target monster focus. Essentially, that will be teaching you about how the monsters will attack if they have an AOE damage. So let's say the monster is right here, and there is two characters right here. If, for some odd reason, the monster has the ability to hit two targets, so let's use this for example. If this is a monster attack, he can hit two hexagons. He will go by the primary focus first. And then he will go by the secondary focus next. So since he has an AOE attack, he will sit here and do two AOE damage right there. And that is multi-monster, multi-target monster attacks. Now, there is monster active bonuses, if you have noticed, poison and wound. The elite zealots will have wound effects while the normal zealots will not have wound effects. So whenever they manage to land a hit or not land a hit, they will inflict wound damage. So essentially, if I hit Hatchet for some odd reason, they will inflict wound damage. And that is essentially most of scenario number three. However, I would after scenario free is completed, do remember, record everything and reset the things, aka your health, your blessings, your cursed cards from your modifier decks, record your money, refresh your character, so refresh all this. Use these experience tracker, subtract and put them right here all that stuff and then put your characters back onto your character board. Ah right, I totally forgot about the loss, uh, the long rest. So essentially when you are on long rest, you are able to reflip this item card back up. That's about it <laughs> with your uh, card drawings. Anyways, recording experience. From now on, each character should now note their experience total. So from now on, as quoted, you will also gain additional EXP for completing the scenario and any, any other EXP gained. So each scenario will be indicating six EXP points for each character. All right. Perk systems. At the very end, you will see the rewards perk systems and also so essentially you essentially go right over here you choose one perk and you flip it over you do a check mark you do whatever it says and do remember your perk systems are permanent now if you can see here, there's a plus one immobilize, plus one poison card damage. Just search in here. Attack modifier add-ons. This is your attack modifier add-ons. Poison. A stun. A stun. Air. Air. There's your modifier. So let's say I did um, immobilize. Right click on that in order to X mark it. Put this here. Plus one, replace one zero card. 
Now, so actually you just draw this and then you delete that. Pull this bad boy in. Remember, this card is different. It's got the arrow in the boots. Do you remember that with a hatchet symbol? And now, that perk system will be with you forever. Okay, that is the perk system. Now we are moving on to events. And also uh, they do describe about perk system of like, oh, is plus one wound is better or plus two damage is better. You essentially have the DM and the players discussed whether or not you want to use it. You just choose which card you want to use. There's that. That's essentially what this is talking about. Anyways, new city interaction, which is the city events. City events will be coming from here. You pull one out, you read the events right here, and then you have two options to choose. And all party member have to agree on one option before flipping over the card and looking at the, the rewards or the punishment. How unsightly. Anyways, so every single scenario that is over, you will encounter one event card. Now do remember, after you use this card, you are to put it here in the encountered events. They shall never be used once again. All right. Afterwards, it is the cleanup of your hand cards. So, uh, let's delete this for now, and then we are moving all of these cards out. Pick out your uh, two cards. So, um, let's see, how do you put this back? Two eye cards, and then now, look at all these beautiful cards right here. Start drawing cards out for those cards. Wait, is that a B? It has a B. B, go back over there. Where is the other eye card? I don't remember. Oh, it's over here. All right, All right. separate. Your two one cards. Bs and As. Before you delete them, try and match it up. Match up the names. Center mass. Stopping power, double throw, disorienting barrage, power pinch, pitch, follow through. Oh, wait, I draw the entire deck. And second wind. Full sets of level one. And that's X, X, yeah, all of these are X's. Oops, oops. Group. Move this out of the way. Delete this. Delete all of this. And this will be your new hand. Your full sets of level ones. There we go. Do, do, do. There is also a reference right there. Uh, turn order review. Anyways, yep, 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 yep. Uh, I think scenario four will teach you about these uh, check marks. They're a representation of check marks. Anyways, thank you all for uh, watching this video, and I hope this has helped you greatly in your uh, adventure of uh, Gloomhaven. And um, I tried to make this as short as possible. I tried to go through as fast as possible. There may be some details that I missed, such as the long rest and how I missed about these items. I'll try and put a, put a little shortcut of each time listed. Anyways, thank you all for watching and I hope you had a great day. And I'll catch you all later. Ciao.